and a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner. No, I'm just kidding, it's a Superbird. Here we are, it's winter still in Illinois, and uh, I'm in a barn that the gentleman has so graciously allowed us to view his incredible collection, and I thought I'd just go through some of the more special ones out there. That right there is a 1969 Dodge Charger 500 440 car. This right here is a Ford Talladega, a real, true, legit Talladega. As you can see by the T on the upper door, he also has a few parts hanging out. And you saw Cosworth Vega here earlier. There's a 66 Charger, true original Hemi car. And then over here is a 1969 Plymouth Sports Satellite convertible 3D3 car. Really nice. Also on this side is a 1970 Dodge Challenger RTSE 3D3 car with the burned orange interior. But how funny is that? It's a column shift. Moving on, that is a true Mercury Cyclone spoiler. Basically untouched. And making our way back here is a 1972 Dodge Challenger and a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner. No, I'm just kidding, it's a Superbird. Six pack car, been sitting here since the 70s and it is complete. Been sitting in the barn for quite a while. So it is in great shape. Gentleman also has some Morris Miners and Crosleys and a Plymouth Arrow with a Tunnel Ram 340, 69 Dodge Coronet 500 convertible that had been wrecked. This is probably the craziest collection I've seen. I just wanted to share it with everyone. I hope you guys have a good afternoon. Thank you. Looks familiar. It's a Roadrunner. No, it's a Superbird. Ha ha ha, that's so stupid. Mercury Cyclone, Opal, Do -do -do. this is the Charger 500 that was on the other side before that I couldn't get to. It's now since been pulled over here. Tires hold air and everything. Ow. Charger 500. And the Taldega. There's the Cosworth. Now there's a whole bunch of vintage Essex. Old Dodge and everything over there. little tight in here. Well, I'm back in the barn. How cool is this? The original 70s Superbird from the magazine cover. It's been sitting for a while, but he did turn it around. So you never know.
You never okay, know. You go big. Like <laughs> You're as good. big as I can go. Oh, wow. Let's see. Four speed car. Wow. And the interior is like mint. Hey. Yeah, I can see what I mean, how cool is that? And here's the Mercury Cyclone. Same car, same location. Little dirty. With a few friends. Back in the barn. We all know the 1969 Dodge Charger 500. I haven't seen it in this kind of light in a long time. It's been sitting a few years. Real 1969 Charger Date 500. Another car that hasn't moved in a while, the 1969 Ford Talladega. Still sitting where it had been since the last time I saw it two years ago. But still definitely well protected. You see where the cat's been uh, taking care of business. Still been sitting on it a while. You can see the cobwebs, but wow. Still so nice. I don't think I've ever seen the other side. Wow, actually looks really nice on this side. Cleaner. That's because it gets more uh, wind, I guess. Crazy cats. All right, well you guys remember the 1970 Hemi Cuda that was in the back of the mobile home? Guess what? It's been brought out. It was actually running and driving here recently. After sitting, I mean, how old are the tires? 40 years old? But it's now the owner finally, after 40 years, has the barn that he always wanted and has brought all these cars, all the barn finds, all the, all the Aero Warriors, his 69 satellite convertible, brought them all inside into a nice, sem somewhat warm, it's kind of chilly in here still, but come on, the cat's happy, that's all that matters. We never actually, this one was always next to your truck, so I never got a good view of this one. The Mercury uh, Cyclone Aero Warrior. The Talladega. The Talladega you moved, it was actually really nice last year when it was right up yeah, in that first yeah, spot. Good, yeah, good the 500 was always next to that pole, yep. or it was buried in that corner. But And then, you know, the Super Bird with the snow tires. <laughs> that old chestnut. And then here it is, the Daytona that was in the back of the mobile home is finally out and running and driving and he takes it to the car shows. So those are just magnets. Don't people go all cattywampus. But he drives this thing to car shows. He went to DuCoin. He went to Bowling Green. He went all over the place. Lexington. Yeah, Lexington. And then he has a aero drag car. Ooh, this would be good for roadkill. Oh, you said five grand, right? That is their five grand. They can have their little Nash Metropolitan. It runs. There's the cat. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Tell the road. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll do it, probably. There we go. Yeah, the the dual Hyundai V6s. I mean, how the owner worked at a Hyundai dealership for how long? Twenty years. Twenty years. And so he decided, what the heck? Might as well put one in. Two an old, oh, two of them in an old street rod. V12. It's a V12, yeah, let's go with that. And then we got... Essex? Essex, and this is, this is the Plymouth, yeah. And then the Dodge. Cadillac with the cat, yeah. Rat Rod 2. And this is another Dodge, right? That's a Chrysler. Chrysler, okay. I mean... It's all the Morrises. Yeah. And look at the cobwebs. That's some serious sitting. Mm -hmm. uh, this one was in the lean-to out yes, back, right? Yes, yeah. This one in that panel truck, yeah. I think you're missing something here. Yeah, kind of a tire. Ribbon. The Morrises. 
And the Morris trucks, those are pretty rare from what I remember reading about. Four ton panel trucks, yeah. convertible. A split window convertible, we got all the wood in it up here. Like that's wow, that's crazy. Rare well, there's another guy around here somewhere that's big. Remember he was on American Pickers? Big into Morris Miners. He was on American Pickers like five years ago. Was it around here though? Yeah, it was in Illinois. Well, okay. Right right in this, like in the really? valley. Look at this. Here, here's a pacer with, of course, you'd put a blown Hemi in it. And it's warmed up. It's ready to go. It is. It's nice and warm. It takes his things out to, look at that old boat drive. That's like Finnegan kind of uh, crazy. Well, out, of, out of a Chevy truck. Is it a Chevy truck? Yeah, with a, a transfer case. Oh, it's a transfer case. Transfer not, case, yeah. Transfer oh, case. okay. Chevy truck. Of course, there's nothing inside of it. Yeah, no, there's nothing inside <laughs> of it. This is fake. But there's a, right, you have the electric motor that turns the engine. In the, in the Yugo, yeah. Oh, that's in the Yugo? It's in the Yugo, yeah. I don't another Cros Here's a Crosley and another Crosley. And another Crosley. And this is here's the Christine Hot Rod. It's an Imperial 392 Hemi in it. Right, 392? Yep. And, oh man, you wait, you were digging out the mouse nest? I, did, I was digging it out, yes. We, we, we literally opened up the hood on this Yugo and a mouse jumped. So we were digging out, or he was digging out the mouse nest. I think it's in there. I think I see it moving around. If I had my flashlight. Wow, it's pretty deep in there. I didn't realize it was that <laughs> bad. But then this, oh, this is the Fiat Topolino. Go -Go the Go Go. Yeah, and then the Lloyd. Another Yugo, and how about a Yugo with another blown Hemi in it? That's all. Isn't that what everyone has in their Yugos? And then, oh, here, I had to show this. I never, this one was buried. Yeah, th this one we never actually saw on video because it was always buried in that one garage. Yep. It's a real true Grand Prix 2 plus 2 Aero Coupe, and it only has... Yeah, 13,000 miles on it. And a factory executive car. Let's see if I can get in there. Yeah, yeah it's a executive, whoop, executive car or something. Whoop, yeah, sorry. Those noses are just like nothing else. This adventure was actually my very first cover of a magazine in Muscle Car Review. And it's been an absolutely incredible journey to have the opportunity to document these cars from sitting in a barn for decades to being running, driving, seeing all over the Midwest kind of cars. Because most of the cars you see that are sitting, like the Superbird, the Daytona, they're back on the road, and The Under takes them all over the place, which is great to see. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video from 10 years of following my friend and his collection of cool cars. I mean, it's mind-blowing that he collected one of every vintage Aero Warrior out there. And even that, you know, Pontiac 2 Plus 2 Aero Coupe. I mean, that was really neat. And I've been fortunate to call the owner a friend for... A decade now and I know that he drives his cars as often as he can I mean he was at Bowling Green with uh the date with the uh the Hemi Cuda last year which I'm sure I showed you a picture a minute ago but uh unfortunately there won't be any follow-ups to the Pontiac collection I know you probably are wondering why it disappeared off the page there were some uh complications in that so I had to remove them but I got a lot of cool stuff coming up including one really crazy, um, really, really unique collection of stuff from vintage motorcycles and a Ford concept car and a ton of models, like every vintage model you can ever imagine and the artwork that goes with them. And it's going to be hard to believe. I don't know if it's going to be the next video, because I think the next one will probably be the Red Hemi Cuda from Detroit. But it's going to be an uh, interesting few weeks. Especially since I'll be going to Detroit here soon to follow up on some stuff. Now that, as you can see, the blue car's back. And uh, I'd finish cleaning at least uh, this side of the garage. And I'll show real quick. 
All right, it might not seem that clean, but, I mean, the fact that the workbench, that's all stuff that's going on the green car, other than that's food. Um, that's chicken, fried rice. Um, I still have to do just some, take off that grinder and some other odds and ends. But, sold the transmission that was underneath there, sold some other odds and ends. So, I'll be getting some more shelving units for here and on the other side. So, yep, I still have to get... I actually went and measured this shelving unit, and it's only like 12 inches deep, while this one and the others are all 18 inches deep. So I'm going to go find some more 18 inch deep units, and I want at least 4 foot, 5 foot tall. So, still working on some stuff, but I think this week me and Seth are going to work on the green car. Because all the stuff that's on it, other than my hat, is going on it. And it's going to be, I think, in the 50s or high or low 60s. So we'll see. Let me know what you think. Of course, I'm always up for comments and questions and any kind of advice on uh, doing better. But I'll talk to you all soon. Stay safe. I wanted to say something special at the end here about my friend Stan McGuire from Iowa. He unfortunately passed away this week from a heart attack in his home. I heard he passed quickly and it's going to be a real... I'm going to miss my friend. I've been on many adventures with him from power tour to adventures through Iowa. We've had dinners and I've stayed at his place. And he was one of the most genuinely good guys that you will ever meet. Him and Lori were absolutely wonderful. Anytime you were around him, even when he was sleeping, it was always a lot of fun. No one would ever have a bad thing to say about him because he didn't have a bad thing bone in his body. I always remember him as he is here as a pimp daddy at one of the Arrow Warrior reunions.